If you want to get started quilting and you go into a quilt store, you can be overwhelmed by how many tools there are. So what tools do you actually need to get started quilting? That's what I'm going to be talking about today. Welcome to EBITDA Studio. My name is Elizabeth and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pojagi and embroidery. So if you're gonna start a new hobby like quilting, it's overwhelming, there's so many things you can see in a quilt shop. But today I'm gonna to show you the bare bone things that you need to get started quilting. And then once you get started, then you can try new things and there's lots of other things that you can get. So when I say what you need, I guess it depends on what type of quilting you want to do. So if you want to do quilting the way it was done a um, hundred years ago with um, hand stitching and templates, then you don't need very much at all. All you would need for that is old pieces of cardboard for templates, a pencil, and then fabric scissors and a hand stitching needle. So that really is an easy, inexpensive way to get started quilting. However, most people today do not hand sew all their pieces. Most people today use more um, quick and efficient techniques. So if you wanna get started with modern quilting, this is what I consider to be the bare bones, basic things that you need to get started. Now, the first thing that you're going to need to do is cut your fabric. So to cut your fabric, you might want to have a good pair of sewing scissors. However, most quilters use a rotary cutter. So this is something, it looks kind of like a pizza cutter, except that this blade is very, very sharp, razor sharp. So be careful with this, respect it, but it's a great tool. But to cut with a rotary cutter, you're also going to need a mat and you're going to need a ruler. Now for a mat, I don't recommend that you start with a little mat like this. Get the largest mat that you can afford and that you have space to store flat. If you store them standing up, sometimes they'll get warped and bendy and so that makes them more difficult to work with. So um, probably you would get like maybe 24 inches by 20 inches or something like that, or three feet by two feet. That's a good size that a lot of people start with. Um, and so the biggest one that you can afford to buy and that you have space to store flat. And then for a ruler, you can't use um, like a uh, office ruler. You wanna use special ruler that is designed for use with the rotary cutter. So these rulers are quite thick and they're very firm so that when you um, run your rotary cutter along the edge of the ruler to cut, then um, you won't be cutting the ruler and it will keep it safe. It won't be hopefully coming up onto your hand. And so I have a whole, another video about a ruler so you can check that out. Um, if you can only afford one ruler, the one that I recommend is a six inch by 12 inch ruler. This ruler is very versatile. You can see this one is quite old and worn out. I've had it for many, many, many years. Um, but if you talk to different quilters, they might have their own favorite ruler, but this is my favorite. You can use it to cut a lot of different shapes. Now, once you get started quilting, you'll find there are hundreds of specialty rulers that you can buy, and those you should consider on a per project basis. I don't recommend that you go out and buy a whole bunch of specialty rulers when you're getting started, um, but you'll need at least one ruler um, to be able to cut straight lines and cut squares and rectangles. So that's what you'll need for cutting. Then uh, beyond that, you're gonna need for sewing pieces together, you're gonna need a sewing machine. And so for a sewing machine, you don't need to go have a top of the line with all the bells and whistles. For quilting, most of what we do with quilting is with a straight stitch. 
And so you don't need all the fancy decorative stitches. You don't need a lot of the other um, things that come on fancy sewing machines. But a couple things to look for that are nice if you're getting a new sewing machine. It's nice if you have a setting where you can leave your needle down. And it is nice if you have um, a wider throat space. And that is the space between where the needle comes and then the main body of the machine. That gap in the middle is called throat space. And in some um, portable travel machines, that's like four or five inches, and then it gets bigger with some um, bigger machines. And the reason why that's nice is, if you're going to be quilting your pieces yourself on your machine, then you're gonna have a lot of bulk like bunched up in that space. So it's nicer if you have more room to work with. However, if you have a sewing machine and it does consistent straight stitch and it works fine, then there's no need to run out and buy a new sewing machine just to start quilting. Start with what you have and then when you know what you use and how often you're gonna use it, then you can work up to a more fancier machine if that's what you want. But just start with what you have. Don't run out and spend a whole bunch of money on a machine if you already have one that works fine. Now in your machine, you're gonna need needles. And this is something that I find a lot of people are like, oh, sewing machine needles are really expensive. I don't wanna um, have to switch out my needle. Uh, but this is something that's really important. Um, switch out your needle regularly. Obviously, if it breaks or if it gets bent, then you have to replace it. But besides that, needles get worn out and we can't always see the wear and tear. Like the tip might get dulled. And so every um, like couple of weeks, if you're sewing every day, it really depends on how uh, much you sew. Um, some people have the habit that anytime they're going to start a new big project, then they get and start a new needle. And that is not a bad philosophy to have. So trying to sew with a needle as long as you can and not changing it is false economy because you're saving the few dollars from buying a new sewing machine needle. But in that you're making your life more difficult and you could be causing damage to your sewing machine, which is gonna cost a lot more to fix. So if you're having problems, if your stitching doesn't look right or something, then often that's the first thing is change your sewing machine needle and see if that makes a difference. Um, so change regularly. Um, I can't give you an exact frequency because it depends on what you're sewing, how much you're sewing, etc but if in doubt, change your needle. And use a, a good brand of needles. Don't get like bargain, no name needles. And that will make your life better. And so besides that, you have cutting, you have sewing, you're also going to need an iron. And if you have any household iron, that will be fine. You don't need to run out and get a fancy um, quilting iron, whatever iron you have, it should get pretty hot. Um, quilters kind of debate on whether or not to press with steam or to press without steam. So I'm not gonna talk about that, but you do need an iron. Pressing your seams as you go and pressing your finished piece will make a big difference on how things turn out. So you'll need an iron and a pressing surface. So an ironing board, if you have it, that's gonna be fine. You can see there's lots of other um, pressing surfaces. Some people make uh, square pressing surfaces or rectangular. Um, you can get wool mats. Those are nice, but none of those are required to start quilting. Just a regular iron and ironing board that you might have stuck in the back of your closet that you never use, that's fine for this. Um, and then beyond that, the last thing that you need, you will need, unfortunately, you will need a seam ripper. Um, I don't think you are gonna be the one quilter, the first of all time to sew without ever making a mistake. Um, everybody does. And so a seam ripper just helps to take out your mistakes so that you can um, fix little things or big things. 
and have a better project. So um, that's what I consider to be the bare bones, what everybody needs to get started. But did I miss something? Let me know if you think I missed something that you think every quilter should have. Um, of course, there are a lot of other things um, that you could have that are fun and they might make things quicker, more efficient or easier. So let me know if you think I missed something that is a must have item. Uh, but if you are just getting started quilting, then um, welcome. I hope that you enjoy this hobby and that it brings um, joy to yourself and to your family. For quilting tutorials, patterns, and inspiration, you can check out my website, ebitastudio.com. Thank you.